scheduling demands that a sergeant be present for most shifts. It only makes sense and is absolute necessity. Uh, these steps, these are the steps I've taken to reduce the police budget. Uh, I think he had a few cuts here. From the uh, patrolman's part-time part-time line was going to be reduced by forty-five thousand dollars. Holiday overtime is going to be reduced by thirteen thousand dollars. Overtime is going to be reduced by seventeen thousand uh, dollars. Matching fund grants are going to be reduced by seventy thousand dollars. Data master, which is our uh, DWI instrument that we use, uh, is going to be reduced by five hundred dollars. Surve surveillance equipment by a thousand, which is going to be uh, that's going to be not non-existent. The radar, vehicle radar by $2,550, that's going to be the zero line. And building improvements by $7,500, and that's going to bring that down to zero. Matt, does he have a, a, a total on that? Uh, I think it was $180,000. He wrote down $180,550. Okay, I think what we took out of the budget was $158,000. Okay, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm sure just I'm, That's great. Okay. 58, five, so that's wonderful. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure exactly. Okay. I was on some of the meeting, but I don't know the exact. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. As I've explained, I have eliminated equipment money, such as radar purchase, surveillance equipment purchase, and ammunition and firearms funds. I reduced the uniform purchase money. There was no line item included for the purchase of any new police vehicles. I'm hoping that the $30,000 promised by Senator Larkin will soon be in the mail. We'll wait and see on that. Uh, this year's automotive equipment line was well over budget because of cost of repairs to high mileage patrol vehicles, which we have in the fleet. The money appropriated for training was substantially reduced. Eliminating this money will prevent the officers from attending new, attending any new training functions except for the state mandated programs. My officers will be unable to attend new training sessions which will keep them abreast of new police technologies. Training programs which are needed to maintain their professional standards and licensing requirements for their everyday work. The recent PESH inspection forced me to unnecessarily spend several thousand dollars from my budget on facility repairs. Uh, these, causes, these costs were necessary to come into compliance with our OSHA violations at police headquarters. Uh, the, the repairs and renovations included the installation of new doors and hardware, new lighted exit signs, and fixing some other minor violations which PESH discovered. The money generally budgeted in the building maintenance line has been totally removed. In order to deal with these reductions from the budget, I and my staff will aggressively seek outside funding sources. If we are able to secure these funds, it will go a long way in easing the requested reductions. At present, we are in line to receive Homeland Security funding, which will allow the purchase of two mobile data computers for the police cars. By installing these computers, the officers will be able to prepare reports, accident investigation reports, and collect motor vehicle information on the road. That will allow them to remain on patrol, not in the, not in the, uh, in the station. Since becoming a police chief in 2000, and through the combined efforts of my staff, the Panagos Police Department has been able to secure over $700,000 in funding in order to support the police department's programs in purchasing equipment, valuable equipment which the town budget cannot provide for. On two occasions, through federal funds secured through uh, the efforts of Senator Larkin, we used to purchase marked and unmarked police vehicles. These vehicles are used under daily patrol operations, but are starting to show, sh show shines of high mileage and wear. Lately, these funds have become very scarce. Mostly, most funding available now is being diverted to the larger police agencies for Homeland <coughs> Security. The department presently receives funding from several, several different state and federal programs. Examples are STEP, which is Selective Traffic Enforcement Program, Child Safety Seat Installation, New York State Buckle Up, and Orange County Stop DWI. <coughs> Each of these programs generates revenue for the town, but more importantly puts an officer or officers on the street to make a child safe in a vehicle or by enforcing aggressive driving violations and cell phone use in the town and on state highways. The town police department has received numerous acc accolades from the sponsors of STEP, as well as having been recognized by the Orange County Stop DWI program for our efforts in keeping the drunk driver off the roads in Goshen. <clears throat> Every year since starting these new programs, the sponsors Sponsors have increased our grant money, due in part because of over 3,000 summonses were issued to violators during the yearly enforcement periods. The officers' salaries associated with these programs are fully funded for those who work the details. <coughs> this also includes the officers' court time, 
put stop DWI and stop programs. The everyday workload in the police department has steadily increased since inception 1990. Contrary to what people think, Goshen is no longer a sleepy little bedroom community. We are faced with a big city crime and similar type problems. The troopers and sheriff's office are faced with more, even more tough acts than we are. Neither agency can provide the quick response time which the town and police afford to its residents. Many times Goshen officers are asked to cover calls for, for other agencies because they are unable to respond. In a life and death situation, a quick response time certainly becomes the main priority. The number of personnel, patrols, and sergeants presently assigned to the schedules is barely adequate enough to cover the everyday operation faced by the agency now. To support this statement, in 2006, the Department of Criminal Justice Services, at my direction, conducted an, conducted an administrative staffing analysis and needs assessment for the police department. The analysis and prepared reports submitted by the DCJS pointed out a number of areas which needed improvement. The most glaring issue reported by DCJS staff was the number of officers assigned to the three shifts and a lack of super supervisory personnel missing from a great percentage of those shifts. Personally, the officers, including the sergeants, work a five days on, two days off schedule, followed by five days on, three days off schedule. This totals 2,080 hours, 2080 hours per year. Part-time officers are limited to only working 1,040 hours per year. In recognizing that these times are financially tough, and in order to reduce the cost as requested, I've directed my staff to implement the following ways to further reduce expenditures. Overtime has always been on a needed basis, on an as-needed basis. Supervisory approval by a sergeant or me is mandatory for a valid reason, and a valid reason is the only time that it's ever approved. Shift coverage is the highest category when it comes to overtime. This can occur whenever an officer is unable to commit to a scheduled tour of duty. An illness, a family situation, or other valid reason may prevent an officer from working. This also occurs in civilian jobs and in every other police department. In order to put an officer on the street, you have to hire, generally at an overtime rate. On occasion, the vacancy can be filled with a part-time officer who does not enjoy the same overtime provisions in the bargaining contract. The department works off a rotating seniority list, and I can assure you that my department's overtime compared to other agencies is not excessive. And I do everything that I do everything to keep it at a minimum. The oversight policy will remain in effect. In order to further reduce overtime, I will issue an order that all court all officer court appearances will be attended under judicial subpoena. I will correspond with the courts and the district attorney's office that the officer will only appear when absolutely needed. Vehicle and traffic notices which in the past called for an officer's attendance will only be attended if directed to by the sitting justice, town appointed prosecutor, or district attorney's representative. The armed police officer that attends the court during the traffic and uh, vehicle and traffic sessions will no longer be assigned. If a police officer is needed because of a problem or disruption at the court, the assigned zone car will be responding to address the problem. Any grand jury court, county court, or family court officer appearances will only be approved by the issuance of a subpoena. As far as training, only state mandatory training will be attended. For firearms, training will only be held once a year and only for minimum qualifications with issued sidearms and shoulder weapons as opposed to the twice a year that we do now. Uniforms and equipment purchases will be authorized for replacement on an absolute needed basis only. Any training which can be done in-house will be undertaken. In closing, it is my goal and the goal of my officers to continue to provide quality police services to the citizens in the town of Goshen. The officers in the town of Goshen Police Department are professionals and I expect only honest interaction with the citizens we serve. Right now everyone is faced with the tough economic times, but it is at times like this when the police will really be called upon to do more for the community and crime will increase. Further, it is my hope that my department can work through the tough issues we are discussing this evening with the continued support from the Goshen citizens and their elected officials the Town of Goshen Police will continue to provide the level of professional service which the Goshen taxpayers deserve and expect. Without the support, the Police Department will suffer and the services to the community will be affected. The officers of the Town of Goshen Police Department are capable of handling any type of call. They understand citizens' concerns and they respond quickly and safely because they know the geographical area and physical layout of the community they serve. They interact with Goshen citizens and business owners on a daily basis. Many of the officers some of the officers grew up in the town of Goshen and continue to live either in the town or nearby or adjoining towns. When they respond to the call, they 
present a capable, knowledgeable, and courteous approach because they are community-minded officers. They are well trained in dealing with the rigorous demands placed on them on their profession by today's society. Officer safety, as well as the safety of the Goshen citizens, is our number one priority. We need the tools, the resources. We need the tools and the resources in order to do our job we are entrusted to do.